Hello and welcome back to the Hasbazan YouTube channel, it is Harry here and today it is time for the second part of the Football Alphabet series of the letter W where we talk about the players whose surnames begin with that letter. If you missed the first part of this particular letter with the clubs whose names begin with W, a link to the playlist where that video is featured is in the description down below along with all the other videos of X, Y and Z that I have done so far in this series. Of course, as I have mentioned before, it is the players surnames that I am interested in and not their first names for the purposes of this video. So without further ado, here are the best players in my opinion whose surnames begin with the letter W. Number 1. Arsene Wenger the first person in this series who is more associated with their managerial exploits as opposed to what they managed in their playing days, Arsene Wenger is a man who revolutionised the way the game is treated and played in England, and, realistically, across the entire world. His playing career was the epitome of unremarkable, combining lower to mid-tier French football with a degree in engineering, and by the end of his playing days at Strasbourg, he was already on the coaching staff at the age of just 31 having completed his managerial qualifications in 1981. His first role came at Nancy, and despite suffering relegation in 1987, he impressed sufficiently to make Monaco take a chance on him. He won the league in his debut season, consistently maintaining challenges at the top of the league and in Europe too, never finishing below third until 1994, when he finished ninth. He was sacked near the beginning of the next season after a poor start to the league, although he has stated that as a result of Marseille's match-fixing scandals as well as the corruption in French football, he would have left soon enough anyway. He revitalised his career in Japan with Nagoya Grampus 8, and Arsenal, who originally wanted him to replace George Graham in 1995, finally got their man in 1996. The papers screamed, Arsene who? But soon enough, they would find out in the most emphatic of manners. He changed the English football landscape, meticulously planning training sessions, playing a possession-based football unlike any we've seen before in the game, with a further emphasis on counter-attacking the opposition whenever given the chance, and he changed the players' diets significantly, further helping players such as Tony Adams and Paul Merson, both of whom had well-publicised addictions to alcohol and gambling respectively, recover. The results of this change in emphasis and attitude were clear for all to see, as under Wenger, Arsenal won three league titles, including a season unbeaten in 2003-2004, seven FA Cups, reached a Champions League final in 2006, and, in recognition of his services to English football, Wenger was awarded with an honorary OBE. Sadly, as a result of a downturn in fortunes, the fan base turned toxic against him, believing him and his controlling ways to be the root of the problem which was endemic at the club, and he stepped down in 2018. Considering Arsenal's tribulations since, I think it's pretty clear to see that it wasn't entirely his fault. Number 2. George Weah The best player Liberia has ever produced by about 10,000 country miles, George Weah was born in 1966 in Monrovia, and his early career consisted of clubs in Liberia and Cameroon, including one named Invincible Eleven. quite braggadocious considering they are in the third tier of Liberian football by now, with whom he won the league in 1987, scoring 23 goals in 22 games in the process. His talents were actually reported to one Arsene Wenger at Monaco, who snapped him up in 1988, and he scored 66 goals in 149 games across four seasons. Famed for his pace, stamina, close control and finishing ability, he transformed the striker's role into someone who was always willing to receive the ball across the pitch as opposed to just being a penalty box poacher and then charging towards goal, something akin to someone like Sergio Aguero nowadays. He joined PSG in 1992 and spearheaded their charge for the league and title in 1994, which they ended up winning, before becoming the top scorer at the 1994-95 Champions League tournament. He moved to AC Milan in 1995, and in that year, he became the first, and today only, African player to win both the FIFA World Player of the Year and the Ballon d'Or. Sadly, his numbers of goals declined as he started to grow older, and he ended up playing for Chelsea in 1999, Man City in 2000, and finally Marseille in the same season as his stint at Manchester City, before retiring in 2001. After this, he tried his hand at politics in his home nation of Liberia, establishing the populist Congress for Democratic Change party for the 2005 election, which he narrowly lost. However, at his third attempt in 2017, he finally ended up winning the election, making him the first footballer to become the president of their country, pledging to fight corruption, racist policies, as he called them, concerning foreigners being unable to own land, and illiteracy. Number 3. Abby Wambach the second highest goal scorer in the history of international football only behind Canada's Christine Sinclair, Abby Wangback holds a curious distinction of having played more games for her national team than during her club career. In the 2002 season, she was named Rookie of the Year after 10 goals and 10 assists in 19 games for Washington Freedom, although within a year, the Women's United Soccer Association, owing to financial troubles, was folded, meaning that Wangback went without the club for 6 years. In 2009, the Women's Professional Soccer League came in to replace the Woosa, and Wangback signed for the Freedom again and then the brilliantly named Magic Jack in 2011. In 2012, however, the WPS met the same fate as the Woosa and ceased to exist, 
but the National Women's Soccer League, which still exists today, came in to give Wan back a league into play during her twilight years of her club career, as she signed for Western New York Flash before finishing her club career in 2014, after having scored 75 goals in 119 games. It was for the national team, however, that her talents more than ever came to the fore. An aerial specialist with fantastic positional awareness, Wambach ended up scoring 184 goals in 255 games for the USWNT, even scoring 30 goals and creating 13 more in 31 games during 2004 alone. And she won the Women's World Player of the Year in 2012 to go alongside American Footballer of the Year six times. Despite the USWNT's dominance over the game, she only emerged with one World Cup success in 2015, the final of which turned out to be her final game of her career, and one Olympics gold medal in 2004. However, she reached 100 goals for her national team quicker than any other player in USWNT history, and has a much better goals per game ratio than Sinclair, who has 186 goals in 296 international appearances. So I know who my winner is on that front. Number 4. Fritz Walter a player who loved wet conditions, Fritz Walter was voted as Germany's golden player over the last 50 years in 2003, ahead of the likes of Franz Beckenbauer, Gerd Müller and Lothar Matthäus. Born in 1920 in Kaiserslautern, he spent his entire career with his boyhood club as an attacking midfielder come forward, finishing up in 1959 with a staggering 357 goals in 364 league games for the club. Furthermore, despite being in the army and Germany playing internationals across Europe between 1940 and 1942, Walter only missed one of them, including playing in one, a 5-3 win in Budapest, in which he starred, which eventually saved his life. Captured and put in the Soviet POW camp in 1945, he realised he had no hope of surviving, so stayed on the lookout for one last football match. He found one in Ukraine, the final stop before the Siberian gulags, which all the German POWs were to be exiled to lobbing the ball back with such proficiency that he was invited to join in. One of the players instantly recognised him from that performance against Hungary, and his name was rubbed off the list of the prisoners to be sent to Siberia, and instead he was made coach of the camp team. Being a famous footballer had saved his life. Upon returning home, he had caught malaria, making him averse to warm weather, but he continued playing for Kaiserslautern, helping them win the title in 1951 and 1953, the latter season with a phenomenal record of 38 goals in 30 games. For West Germany, he missed out on the 1950 World Cup as the Mannschaft were banned from taking part, but the 1954 World Cup would be a chance for him to prove himself on the international stage. Despite being thrashed 8-3 by Hungary in their opening game, they reached the final, which was held on a rainy day, perfect for Walter, and he sparkled, instigating the comeback that helped the Germans win their first ever World Cup. He passed away in 2002, and in 2005, the German Annual Youth Awards were named in his honour. Number 5. Billy Wright Another one club man who curiously retired in the same year as Walter, Billy Wright is my English representative in this list, although honourable mentions go out to the likes of Ian Wright and Chris Waddle. He was originally rejected by Wolves in 1939 as a centre-half for being too small, before they changed their minds, although his career was stunted somewhat by the outbreak of the war. His debut wouldn't therefore arrive until 1945, although he was capped by England within a year, and by 1948 he had assumed the captaincy of both club and country. A tenacious player who epitomised Wolves' direct style under Stan Cullis, Wright won three league titles during Wolves' golden age of the 1950s, including in his final two seasons as a professional in 1957-58 and 1958-59. Despite being an understated character on the pitch, Wright preferred to lead by his own example, and it worked, especially since he only missed 31 Wolves games in the 1950s, up until his retirement. His England career set numerous records, as he played in 70 consecutive games, won 90 caps as captain, a record which has since been equaled by Bobby Moore, and was the first player across all international football to reach 100 caps for their country. In 1958, he even married one of the Beverly sisters, putting him firmly in the showbiz sections of the newspapers as well as the sporting ones, and upon retirement, he became the manager of Arsenal in 1962. Unfortunately, he holds the record for the worst post-war win percentage of any Arsenal manager at 38.62%. Even Unai Emery wasn't that bad. And Brian Glanville, the legendary writer, stated that he lacked any authority as a manager and couldn't take constructive criticism. He died in 1994 at the age of 70. And that just about wraps up today's video on the players whose surnames begin with W. Thank you very, very much for watching. Of course, the players whose names begin with V and the clubs whose names begin with V will come out at some point over the next couple of weeks or so. Thank you very much for watching. As I say, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more and until next time I'll see you then